Hey everyone, Matt here with Reach Your Summit. Had a lot of you asking me what my winter hammock setup is like. And I'm out here on a beautiful winter backpacking trip in Vermont. And I thought I would go through some of the clothing that I use for my sleep system, my winter hammock setup, and a couple of tips and tricks that I use to stay warm when I'm winter backpacking. So let's get started. All right, so the hammock that I'm using on this trip is the Kamek Mantis UL. I have a winter barrier cover replacing the mesh bug net and the tarp. So this is going to help trap a little more heat inside of the hammock at night. It's kind of similar to a single wall tent. It's been known to add an additional 10 degrees of warmth to your sleep system and everything else that you have. So on really cold, dry nights where you're getting light fluffy snow or it's just not doing anything at all this is going to be a great option it gives me really good wind protection I have a couple of vents up here on the top near the head and I have a couple more right near the doorway on both sides and I'll put a link up in the video description for this video highlighting the Kamek Mantis UL. And in that video, I show exactly where those ventilation ports are. Uh, so this gives me a little extra warmth, as I mentioned. It gives me good wind protection. It can handle light precipitation. Uh, but this is also made out of a sill nylon. So it's going to pack down really nice and small. It's going to be waterproof to a certain extent, but if I get a really heavy wet snow, or if the winds are just very, very strong on my backpacking trip, then I might want to put an additional tarp over this system that I have here on this trip. With the additional tarp, I can block the wind a little bit more, increase my warmth, and get a little more weather protection. The next thing that I have with my hammock system is an under quilt. Now, for this specific trip, right around 16, 17 degrees Fahrenheit out. So I have a 20 degree under quilt by Hammock Gear. This is the incubator. A lot of small cottage manufacturers in the hammock world, I find personally their under quilts are excellent. They perform, in my experience, right around the temperature rating that they are listed as. I have also personally been able to sleep comfortably down to about 5 to 10 degrees lower than the temperature rating of an under quilt. So with this 20 degree, I can sleep comfortably down to about 10 degrees. Under quilts are definitely a little bit pricier with a hammock system, but they are excellent. This one is filled with uh, 850 fill down and about 2 ounces of additional overfill. Now that overfill is going to help increase my warmth by a couple of degrees as well. So that also factors into allowing me to sleep down to 10 degrees colder than what this is rated for. Uh, under quilts not only give you excellent warmth and help mitigate cold spots, but they are super comfortable. It's just like wrapping yourself up in a cocoon. You can also find some under quilts that are made out of synthetic materials. As I mentioned, this one is down. I find it takes a lot to get down wet, so I'm not too concerned with this. It is very dry and windy out here. I don't have any precipitation in the forecast. If for some reason I want additional protection with the under quilt, I can always go with an under quilt protector, but I don't find that I need it for this specific trip and for a lot of my trips throughout the winter. If you didn't want to invest in a quilt, you can also go with a sleeping pad system. In that case, I would double up with your sleeping pads. You want to go with a sleeping pad that is rated at at least an R value above four for the winter. For inside the hammock, I have a top quilt. Now this is the Enlightened Equipment Revelation 20 degree quilt. I use this in my tent on a lot of backpacking trips too. 
and it performs very well for me personally inside of my hammock system. And this Revelation 20 degree quilt is filled also with 850 fill power down and it does have a water treatment. So pairing this with my 20 degree under quilt, I can sleep very comfortably inside of my hammock. If I'm in the deep, deep winter, like this is December right now, if I'm out in January or February, up in New Hampshire or Maine, the temperature can be around zero degrees or colder, I will swap out this 20 degree under quilt and this 20 degree top quilt and I'll go with something rated at zero degrees or with my quilt or sleeping bag, I might even go as low as minus 20. Just depends on the conditions, the location, and how I'm feeling. I typically sleep warm, so I find this to perform very well down to lower temperatures than what they're rated for. Another trick that I like to use if I'm getting a little cold at night and I want some additional warmth, and I only have the, the type of quilt that I have with me on this trip. One thing that I've tested out in the past that has worked really well is bringing just a lightweight reusable space blanket. So this is the Escape Light by SOL. It has the reflective material on the inside. I can use this as a sleeping bag liner inside of my hammock if I get too cold or what I like to do because I don't like to feel restricted inside of my hammock. I can just pull this inside out uh, or if you have one that's velcro you can peel apart the velcro and lay it out but I'll just tuck this And that's going to reflect 80 to 90% of my body heat back to me, which will then end up giving me a little bit of increase in warmth and comfort inside of my hammock system. I know some people don't like using a pillow for a hammock system. I personally do. This is a Sea to Summit Eros pillow. It has down in the very top and I believe the fill power is 600 or 650 fill power. I'm getting a little additional warmth with this. It also feels comfortable against my skin, not as likely to freeze. And it just helps give me a little more of a, a comfortable lay inside of my hammock. Now when you're hammocking in the winter or backpacking in the winter time, you wanna keep your feet dry. If you don't, you're not going to be sleeping comfortably. That's just the way it is. You gotta make sure your feet are dry, you gotta make sure they're warm, you're comfortable before you get into your hammock system at night. So I'm going to go over my sleep clothing in just a couple of minutes. Now another thing that I like to use to increase my warmth is a down jacket. Now I'm not looking to shave a lot of ounces in my backpacking kit when I'm out in the winter. I personally like to focus more on safety and comfort. I still go with simplicity and keeping things as light as possible. So with a down puffy jacket, what I like to do is I'll wrap it around my ridge line. Just like that. Cinch it down. like that. All right, so I've got my down jacket right up top here. And then I've got my quilt right here. So I just have my down jacket hanging around the ridge line as you can see here. And then I've got an additional layer of down. This jacket's filled with 850 fill down as well. I have an additional sleeve that I can slide my feet into. So I have my 20 degree under quilt, I have my 850 fill down jacket, and then I have my 850 fill down quilt that I can cinch down like a sleeping bag. 
and slide my feet right inside of my jacket here. It's all about keeping those feet warm. Let's go with the socks first since we're talking about keeping those feet warm. So what I have here are darn tough mountaineering socks. These things are super, super warm. Um, these will not come out of my pack until I'm in my hammock and ready to go to bed. Uh, these are the thickest socks that Darn Tough makes. They're really heavy over the calf cushion. And they give me a lot of warmth personally. Then I'll go with some sleep pants. These are a mid-weight base layer. Uh, they're polyester. You can also go with merino wool or silk, whatever you find to be comfortable. And then my upper layer will go with a mid-weight base layer as well. This is a, almost like a very lightweight grid fleece material. You can go with polyester, merino wool, silk. The mistake a lot of people make when they're sleeping in the winter time is they overdress. And when you overdress, you end up sweating and the result is you end up getting very cold. So you want to be comfortable, but you don't want to be dressed to the max where you have puffy clothes on everywhere. Very, very cold rated sleeping bag. Four or five layers on because you're just going to sweat. You're going to get cold very, very quickly. If I start to feel very chilly, I can also add in a, a grid fleece. This is the Patagonia R1. I've had this fleece forever. It's been super warm and comfortable. So you got the grid there. 100 weight fleece is going to be excellent. If you can't find a 100 weight, a 150 or 200 weight would be okay. Uh, try to go a little more minimal if you can but this fleece has kept me really, really warm on cold nights. So I'll layer this on top of my base layer. And most of the time, that is all that I'll sleep in. So using that with my sleep system, I can get very, very comfortable. I may also have what I have on now here at camp to add to my sleep system if I get very cold. And this is just the Patagonia Micro Puff. Uh, this is a synthetic fill jacket and it has a hood. So I can put the hood over my head with a winter hat on. Or if I have a jacket that does not have a hood and I want extra warmth, some trips I'll bring a balaclava. And then what you can do I can wear my hat over my head I can pull this down if I wanted to because I don't want to have any condensation uh, building up inside of the sleeping bag from breathing or inside of my quilt but I can also just leave this over my face for a few minutes and get a little extra warmth if I need it. Uh, and then the other thing is you can also use a buff. So this is a tubular piece of fabric. I can wear this as a beanie or a second beanie over this one. I can wear it as a balaclava if I don't have a balaclava and I just have this. Or I can wear this as a neck gaiter. It has over a hundred uses. This one's made out of merino wool and it's surprising how much warmth these can add to your body uh, when you're sleeping or when you're stationary or when you're moving around. I always wear these when I'm out backpacking. The cap that I have on here, this is merino wool too. This will give me extra warmth. It's a good temperature regulator, all this merino wool that I have on very very comfortable when I'm out in conditions like this at night sometimes my hands will get cold too so in that case 
I have a pair of merino wool gloves on right now. These are glove liners. I'll wear them when I'm sleeping. They give me really good comfort and warmth. And during the day, if I'm out on the trail and it's really cold, I can throw them on with my gloves that I have here. So these are the Black Diamond Dirt Bag gloves. They're goat leather. They do have 100 grams of polyester insulation in them. And I love that I get really good finger movement still with these gloves. A couple of other things that I do to help keep my feet dry and warm is my footwear. So here I have the Ultra Lone Peak 4.0 RSMs. These are a mid-height. Uh, they perform very well for me last winter, so I've been very happy with them. I picked up another pair. They are not insulated. So if you get cold feet, then you might not find these to be comfortable, but I wear the Lone Peak 4.0s and I just picked up the 4.5s recently and uh, I wear those all the time. So this was a nice easy transition for me. I'll put a link in the video description for this video highlighting these so you can check out that video too in the video description below. On top of that, I have a pair of gaiters. These are the Outdoor Research Rocky Mountain Low gaiters. And then I have Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain pants. These dry very quickly, so if I needed additional warmth at night and my legs got cold and these are dry, I can just throw these on over my base layer pant that I sleep in. Uh, under the Helium 2 pants, which I wear throughout most of the winter, I have a, another pair of base layer pants underneath here to give me additional warmth. Uh, those are merino wool that I have under here. And then underneath these pants, I, for my socks, I have a boot cushion, darn tough, uh, merino wool sock. And then I have a Merino Wool REI Co-op Merino Wool 200 weight base layer shirt. Uh, and this has a zip up top so I can regulate the, the temperature and ventilation when I need to for additional warmth. A uh, couple of additional things that I like to bring on my winter hammocking trips. Uh, lightweight thermos. So this weighs about seven and a half ounces. It's double wall insulated. And I like that I can make a nice hot drink when I'm at camp. Pour it in here. And then when I'm out during the day and I'm stopping to take breaks, I can take this and warm up a little bit. It also allows me to make sure that my beverages stay hot at camp when I'm hanging around because I'm not going to be sitting there and drinking it the whole time. Uh, hot chocolate, coffee, excellent. So another thing that I like to use on my winter trips is a liquid fuel stove. When the temperature gets down below 10 degrees, there's not much you can do with a remote canister stove and you're not going to get really good performance out of a integrated canister stove or a canister stove. So this is going to help me stay warm at camp when I can have those hot drinks that will help keep me warm. So here I have the MSR Whisper Light and some fuel. There's nothing more gratifying than getting to camp and having a nice hot drink and a hot meal to help keep you warm. These are essential for me personally in staying warm at camp in the winter with my hammock system. Uh, the other thing that I have 
Nalgene bottles. So, three season trips, I will not carry a Nalgene bottle just because they're ridiculously heavy. Uh, but the winter time, they're indispensable. Here I have a 32 fluid ounce Nalgene bottle uh, with water inside of it and some juice mix. And the reason I have some juice mix in there is because the sugars in the juice mix help keep the water from freezing around where water typically freezes. So it helps the water stay liquefied down to a slightly lower temperature. And along with that, I'll also store my water bottle upside down so that way the liquid is around the cap and I don't have air with droplets around the cap. Uh, this helps prevent the cap from freezing. And then lastly, this is just a merino wool smart wool sock that I use as a koozie and it helps give my Nalgene bottle a little bit of insulation. Another thing that you can use if you wanted to and you got really cold is you can carry a, a packet of hand warmers or toe warmers, body warmers. I personally like the Hot Hands brand. They are one of the best in performance in my experience and they definitely last what they're listed for on the packaging, 10 to 12 hours. The problem with a lot of these hand warmer packets is once they reach their average temperature, which is around 120 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, a lot of the brands that I've used in the past, they end up losing their temperature a lot quicker within that 8 to 10, 12 hour range that they're uh, designed for. These slowly lose their temperature. so going to stay warmer a lot longer with something like this. A couple of other things with the hammock I have the ridge line on here so this gives it a little more structure and it also allows me to hang things outside of my hammock, inside of my hammock uh, with all of my gear there and as I showed you that down jacket so if your hammock doesn't have a ridge line for the winter time or in general, it's something that you might want to strongly consider. I also have a couple of guy outs here and the way that I have it anchored to the ground in the snow, you can't use stakes in the winter. So what I have is a snow and sand anchor. This is just fabric with uh, some nylon webbing coming off of it. These are MSR snow and sand anchors. And all I did was I threaded this knotless hook here through a loop that I had down at the bottom here. So it's similar to like a lark's head. And that allowed me uh, to secure this to the anchors and then I can easily detach it when I need to. And you wanna bury this about six inches under the ground. And I have the other side anchored like that too. Here's what the under quilt looks like. You want to be careful not to bunch it up too close uh, to the hammock because then what happens is you end up squeezing a lot of the loft inside of this under quilt and it's going to reduce the warmth that you're getting inside of the under quilt. Uh, the under quilt is working very similarly to a lot of our down jackets. So you're trapping air and trapping heat inside of here and if you have this too close to the the hammock and too tight then you're not going to be getting the optimal performance with the under quilt uh, i have a snow shovel here these 
The other thing a lot of you might be wondering is with my pack, but what do I do with it personally at night? I can either uh, leave it sitting on top of the snow. This is Dyneema composite fabric, uh, so I don't have to worry about the snow soaking through the fabric. But if I wanted to, I do have a loop on the back here, and I can just find a stick uh, just like this here. With this hammock, I have a bunch of loops on these straps. So what I can do is I can feed the, the hull strap through that loop, just like that, and take my stick, and I can feed that stick through that hull strap. So it looks like that. Now my pack is successfully suspended. For my footwear, I can tie them, uh, I can tie the laces together and throw them over the suspension strap, just like I have with the gloves here. Or what I've done in the past is if you have a couple of trekking poles, you can flip them upside down and just hang them over your trekking pole. Or what I like to do is I'll set my snowshoes close to my hammock. Or maybe right there like that. And I can hang my shoes over my snowshoes or I can just leave my snowshoes on the ground like that and sit my shoes on top of that. So when I get out of the hammock, I just slide my feet right into my footwear and I don't have to worry about getting my feet soaked or cold. In my how to sleep warm at camp in winter time video, I also discussed a pee bottle. With hammock camping, I'm not going to carry one of those. I'm just going to get out and just go pee. It'll definitely wake me up, especially when it's very, very cold, but it can be rejuvenating. It definitely gives you that wild experience. You're out there, it, it makes you feel alive. Another reason why uh, I don't go with the pee bottle in the winter time with the hammock is because it's very difficult to pee when you're swinging around and you're suspended in the air. Uh, it's a little bit easier to, to do that when you're inside of a tent. So I will not bring a pee bottle when I'm out hammock camping in the winter. The best way to do that is to just do it. So as soon as you get out of your warm and cozy quilt or sleeping bag, you're gonna feel it. And uh, so what I like to do is I just kind of motivate myself very quickly. I know it's going to be very short term and I prepare myself. And as soon as I'm prepared, I'll throw that quilt off quick, I'll get my footwear on, I'll go pee, and then I'll go and get back inside of my hammock. It's a very quick process. Once you think everything out and you just go out and do it, it's very easy uh, to stay warm when you're out backpacking in the winter time with the hammock system. And then my snacks. So I'll always have a snack before I go to bed. It helps keep me warm. I'll focus on something that has a very high fat content. So, uh, so here I have cookies and cream bar. I have a fruit and nut Lara bar. And I also have uh, some smoked salmon bites. These are delicious. You can go with candy bars, nuts, trail mix. Just make sure to focus on something that has high fat and that's going to help give me a little additional warmth uh, when I'm sleeping at night in my hammock. Another thing that you can do if you're feeling a little cold 
just very light exercise. Do some jumping jacks, do some push-ups, dance around a little bit, whatever helps you get a little bit of, of additional warmth, gets that blood flowing, gets your metabolism going. Anything you can do to increase your warmth is going to help you sleep more comfortably out when it's cold in the winter time. Uh, so there you have it. That's my winter hammock system and my sleep clothing. Some tips and tricks that I like to use in the winter time. If you have any additional questions on this gear that I went over or questions on anything else you've seen in any of my other videos, please feel free to get in touch with me in a comment below or you can contact me at reachyoursummit.net. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you on the trail. Stay warm out there.